hot on the heels of the news that Pierce Grayson is getting a change of face with Tim Robards leaving his role four weeks early. We thought it'd be fun to take a look at some other recasts from over the years on Neighbours. Uh, now we're not going to be looking at the child recasts here for the most part at least, like we'll look at Lucy. But characters who were in it as like a two year old for example and then came back as an adult, we won't mention. But we will mention all of the other big ones, I think, if we remember them all. And we'll give our brief thoughts on just how successful that was. Um, and to begin then, we go right back to the 1985 season, as that drew to a close. And 1986 began with Scott Robinson looking very different. Darius Perkins held the role of Scott for the first year of the show, and he was a very different Scott to the Scott that we got when Jason Donovan took over the role. Um, but behind the scenes problems with the actor are rumours who have played a part in why there was the switch. And when 1986 began, Scott was missing. He was eventually found in hospital, and it turns out that he must have had a serious accident because he did not look the same at all. Now, Jason Donovan Scott is obviously the iconic Scott. It's the Scott that everybody remembers, but I think there's a lot to be said for the way, um, I keep calling him Darius, I think it's Darius, um, for the way Darius actually portrayed the character. It was a much calmer, gentler Scott, um, almost timid, a little bit shy, and I think Darius did a really, really good job of portraying that. Obviously, I like Jason Donovan and Scott too, but they really are chalk and cheese. There wasn't very many similarities between the two, with even Scott's friendships with the likes of Danny deteriorating and kind of fading away into nothing, really, when Jason Donovan took over the role. Ah, uh, Lucy Robinson. Um, so, Lucy was played by Kylie Flinker, which is a fun name to say, and she was on the show for the first two and a bit years. Um, it was 1987 when Lucy went off to visit Bradley in Paris, and then 50 episodes later, she came back played by the very different looking Sasha Close. It took a while to get used to Sasha in the role because Lucy was very, very different and she hadn't been gone that long. But again, both versions of the characters were good in their own way, even if for me, Sasha Close's Lucy is uh, my least favourite Lucy Robinson, I think, but that's probably because of how invested I am in the late 80s that I'm just re-watching again for the first time in years, so maybe I'll like her a lot more once I'm done. Of course, that wasn't the end of the Lucy recast, as when Lucy left again in 1989, she was gone for about a year and a half, and when she came back, she was now a bit of a sex bomb played by Melissa Bell. Now, Melissa Bell's Lucy is arguably THE Lucy now. She's popped up so many times over the years, um, as recently as this year, in fact. And she made the role her own, even if this Lucy was, again, completely different to Lucy 2, who was completely different to Lucy 1. Bell's Lucy is personally the one that I'm the most familiar with, so she's the one that I tend to like the most. Uh, that being said, if you look at the Lucy from the 90s and then the the business mogul Lucy that we have now, they're chalk and cheese, like I'd, I'd love to find out how Lucy got from where she was to where she is, and because we haven't seen it, I really struggle to accept Lucy in the role that she's in. But hey, I like Melissa Bell, always a pleasure to see her. Beverly Marshall's up next, or Beverly Robinson, whatever she's called these days. Uh, Lisa Armitage originally played the role, and she stayed on the show until 1989, February in fact, and this was a very short turnaround between actors too. It was only just over a month when Beverly took off, and then she came back played by Shauna O'Grady. O'Grady's Beverly stayed on the show for a year, and both versions of the characters were fine, to be honest. I think both of them resembled each other well enough, at least in my mind. And of course, Sean O'Grady has returned to the show in recent years as well, sporting a very fetching red hair and still having the surname Robinson for reasons unknown to everyone except the scriptwriters. Toby Mangle was another child character that we will count as the recast because both characters were on the show for quite some time. Finn Greentree Keen, I know a lot of people think he's the preferable Toby, um, he's not my Toby, remained on the show until February 1990, and then when he disappeared it was only two months before the role came back, with Ben Gurrens playing him. Gurrens' Toby lasted longer than the original Toby did by quite some way, and even outstayed his on-screen family. Um, he stayed on the show until 1993, very early 93, where he left with Dorothy Burke. And for me, there was just something a bit irritating about the original Toby. I'm not sure why. Much prefer Ben Gurrens. Ah, Brad Willis. So there were three Brad Willises. Uh, the first was played by Benjamin Mitchell very briefly, uh, back in the late 80s. But when he returned in 1991, he was played by Scott Michelson, and then Benjamin Mitchell instantly joined the cast as Brad's cousin Cameron, and then later as Donna Freeman's dad. Um, it's not really worth talking about the original Brad that much, to be honest, he was such a bit character, um, but the main difference is, of course, between Brad number two and Brad number three. Uh, Scott Michelson stayed on the show from 91 until 93, and then he left and was gone for, I think, 20 years uh, before he returned, played by Kip Gambling. Brad number two was dumb, dense, and incredibly chilled out, whereas Brad number three was boring as hell. Very much a cardboard character, not that much to like about him, just incredibly boring, and I don't think that's Kip Gambling's fault, I think that's just the way they wrote Brad, um, but it's a stark contrast uh, between Brad 2 and Brad 3. 
neither brand particularly set the screen alight, um, but you kind of got to admire the, the dimness of brand number two compared to brand number three, who just sent me to sleep the majority of the times that he was on the screen. And it says quite a bit about the sort of person that Lauren's looking for in a man, because her first husband wasn't exactly Mr. Charisma either, was he? Julie Martin then, or formerly Julie Robinson, uh, was played by Vicky Blanche in the first year of the show. She left towards the end of that first 1985 season, and when she came back in 1992, she was played by the wonderful Julie Mullins. This, for me, still stands out as the best recast that the show has ever done. Physically, I don't think that Blanche and Mullins look that much alike. Their portrayal of Julie was absolutely spot on. Julie Mullins seemed like an evolution of the Julie that we'd seen before. She, it seems like she would have gone down the path she did and became the sort of character that she did. Mullins made the character her own. I really liked the original Julie, played by Vicky Blanche. I really did, but there's only one Julie for me now, and that's Julie Mullins. Uh, Mullins, of course, left the show in 1994. The character of Julie was killed off. And by all accounts, that was down to some behind-the-scenes drama, and Julie could actually have kept popping up in the show for years if they'd allow her to. But yeah, if you're looking for top quality, perfect Neighbours recasting, it's the character of Julie. Cody Willis then. Um, Amelia Frid's Cody captured the hearts of many a young boy in the early 90s. I had a massive crush on her when I was like 8 or 9 years old, and she was part of one of the most memorable teen groups the show had with her, Melissa, Josh and Todd. Cody left the show in 1991, and she returned just over two years later. Um, she'd been living in America, but when she did come back, it wasn't an American accent she'd developed, it was an incredibly raspy voice and ginger curly hair. This Cody was absolutely nothing like the original Cody. Now, I quite like Cody 2, played by Peter Brady. I think Brady did a really, really good job playing that character, but it wasn't Cody. Like, I never saw her and thought she was the same character from the 90s. She was just a completely different character in my mind. Um, definitely not as good as the original Cody whatsoever, but that wasn't Peter Brady's fault. She looked nothing like her, she sounded nothing like her, and she was written nothing like her too. Now, I'm not saying that you have to have somebody that looks exactly the same as the original actor to come in and do it. In fact, I don't think that's a smart way to try and cast at all. But if you're going to bring a character back, don't make them so different from the one that you've seen before. Um, much like Brad. If it looks, feels, and sounds like an entirely different character, then we're not going to have that connection with what the character was to begin with, so what was the point in bringing them back anyway? Cheryl Stark up next then. Um, Caroline Gilmer didn't actually leave the show to be recasted, but she was taken ill and had a few months off the show. Instead, she did come back in 96 and then leave a few months afterwards. Um, but while she was off, Caroline Gilmer's role was filled by one Colette Mann. Uh, today, Sheeda Canning did play Cheryl Stark for a few months from uh, late 1995 into early 1996. Interestingly, though, there was an episode where Brett Stark had a bit of a fever dream in Africa and saw the original Cheryl talking to him in a dream in the same episode that we had the new Cheryl in, which kind of just sums up how that shit crazy 1995 was. I... I shouldn't be here. I have to get home. Home? Well, yeah. <laughs> My mother. She'd be worried. <laughs> no, really, she, she will. You don't know her. <laughs> um, it's hard to judge these sort of recasts harshly, uh, because it's a matter of circumstance that there wasn't much they could do about it. Cheryl needed to be in the storyline, so they couldn't just write her out. Uh, I think Colette Mann did fine in the role. She didn't feel exactly like the same Cheryl, but then it's impossible to feel exactly the same. Um, but I think she did a good job, but obviously Colette Mann is much more suited to the character of Sheila, who joined the show in I think, 2012 or 2013, and she is still here to this day. Next up, Cheryl's son. Uh, Darren Stark was originally played by Scott Major, who went on to play Lucas Fitzgerald and is now a very successful director on the show. He directed Endgame. Uh, Scott played the character in 1993 when he was full-on troublemaker and eventually he got sent to prison. When he was released in 1996, Tom McDonald took over the role. And I think it would be fair to say he made it his own. Uh, Darren has spent time in prison, which explained why he had softened a little bit. Um, he wasn't the nasty criminal that he was in 1993. He had reformed somewhat while still having that bad side to him. And I think Darren's a great character. It's just a shame that they kept bringing him back just to cheat on Libby over and over again. Jack Scully then. Uh, Jack Scully was originally played by Paul Pantano uh, in 2001. Uh, the only male child of the Scully children until Oscar came along. I think you're prepared to say that Pantano didn't exactly set the screen alight in the role of Jack. Um, he didn't stick around on the show long. Um, when he left, it was about a year and a half until he came back, and then he was played by Jay Bunyan, who I'm pretty sure has changed his name to something else now because of the surname Bunyan. Uh, you can see him in It Chapter 2 most recently, and he had a long-running role in the uh, Beauty and the Beast reboot TV series, which I think lasted for about five seasons. Um, I really liked this portrayal of Jack, um, even though there were some really silly storylines, like his addiction to going clubbing. Uh, he was a fun character. There was a troubled side to Jack, like he could find himself on the wrong side of the law from time to time, he wasn't exactly a model citizen, um, but Bunyan was great at comedy as well, the making mansion storyline was made I think because of Jack's bemusement at everything that was going on. 
Grant. Yes, Jackie Pet. I need a picture frame, OK? Oh, uh, well, there's a lovely little gift shop round at Anson's Corner. Velda, that's not exactly what I was looking for. Well, if his Ricky Martin poster's going to look good on... I well, don't have a Ricky Martin poster. I have never had a Ricky Martin poster. Can we start again? Louise Allen, then. Um, I know we said we wouldn't cover many child actors, but this one's notable. Jordan Anatoly uh, played the role for uh, most of Louise's childhood until she was snatched away from Lou in a horrible retcon. But when she came back, she was played by Adelaide Kane, somebody who I didn't think was a particularly strong actress on the show. Um, I never really liked her as Louise. Um, I'm surprised that she's gone on to find relative success um, in America on the TV show Rain, but then I've never seen it, so perhaps she's got much, much better. Uh, but why this is of note is that uh, Kane didn't stick around on the show for long, um, but when she was returned again a few years later, she was back to being played by Jordan Anatoly again, which is something I think we can all wish for for the character of Declan, who we will get to very shortly. Libby Kennedy up next then. Uh, Libby has, of course, always been played by Kim Valentine, with a few months exception. Um, originally joining the show in 1994, despite leaving for a few years, uh, she returned, but in 2008, Kim Valentine was taken ill, and Michaela Bannis had to step into the role. Um, it's one of those situations where you don't envy Michaela Bannis for having to step into such a beloved and well-known character who's been in for as long as Libby has, um, but I thought she did a good job with it. I thought she did absolutely fine. Uh, there's a lot of behind-the-scenes drama involved in this, I gather, which we won't go into really here, but as recasts of this kind go I think this is one of the more successful ones but Gayla Bannis was a great actress obviously she's no Kim Valentine when it comes to playing the character of Libby but she did the best she could and I wouldn't be opposed to seeing Bannis come back into the show in a different role. Summer Hoyland then uh, Marissa Sketter played the role when she originally joined the show in I think 2002 but when she made her final appearance in 2007 that was to be the last time that Marissa Sketter played the role. As from early 2010, Geordie Lucas was the new Summer. Uh, controversially, original actress Marissa Sketter is rumoured to have actually auditioned for the role of Summer to get her old job back and didn't get it, with Geordie getting the role instead. Uh, both characters were very different. Um, it's kind of one you can get away with, though, because Summer was such a young character when she left the show that when she came back a couple of years later, it makes sense that she would have changed as much as she did. Um, I really like both portrayals here. I'd be happy to see either Summer come back to the show. Uh, Declan Napier is the last until Pierce of the characters to be recasted while they are still on screen, um, and this is probably one of the worst recasts that Neighbours has ever done. Um, James Sorensen wasn't a fantastic actor when he first joined, but by the time he got to 2010 and he left, he'd really come into his own. Um, I think he handled everything with Bridget's death brilliantly, and I was really starting to like James and the character of Declan. When they brought in the new Declan, or was it not successful? Um, I don't know much about Erin Mullally's acting skills outside of Neighbours, but he was pretty awful as Declan. Um, to have Declan change from the character he was to this new kind of blank robotic void that Erin Mullally brought to the role in the space of one episode it was one of the most jarring things Neighbours has done. Uh, they kept him around because the character of Declan was so integral to all the stuff that was coming up, uh, presumably with the 6,000th episode story revolving Paul Robinson and Rebecca, but the problem is that this Declan was nothing like the original Declan, so they may as well have just got rid of him to begin with. It was like having a stranger in the role. Nothing about this Declan was recognisable, nothing about this Declan was fun to watch, and honestly, the worst recast Neighbours has had. Lauren Turner then. Uh, Lauren Carpenter, as she was at the time, was originally on the show for a brief period really from 1993 to 1994 but when Sarah Vandenberg left the role it was to be a long time before the character of Lauren came back uh, when she did it was 2013 and she was played by Kate Kendall and she was known best I think for being part of that love triangle between Brad and Beth and then a subsequent romance with Brad that was made out to be far far more than it was when she returned in 2013 honestly the way they were talking about the relationship it was like it was some kind of big epic Romeo and Juliet thing and in reality it really wasn't it was essentially just lust that fizzled out as soon as they made it official but Kate Kendall is a brilliant actress and um, they've been so long between the two Lauren appearances and as I say Lauren wasn't exactly that memorable in her own right that Kate had essentially free reign to come in and do what she wanted with Lauren and I think she did a fantastic job even though the character of Lauren was involved in repetitive and boring storylines I think for the majority of her time on the show but that is kind of representative of that era of Neighbours as a whole and the final one on the list then is Ben Kirk. And this is actually Ben number two and three, but the original Ben was just a little kid. So uh, Blake O'Leary played the role originally. Um, he was the brother of the actor who played Mickey. Oof. He was a kid actor. He didn't get a huge amount of things to do. The character of Ben had hardly been defined at that point because, as I say, he was a kid. Um, but Felix Mallard came in to go for the role. And while I think Ben was essentially a really wasted character, like honestly, has there been more of a character in Neighbours who was just relegated to the background as much as Ben was? Uh, Felix Mallard, I think, did a fine job with the character of Ben. Or as fine a job as he could with the little he was given. So they're most, if not all, I think, I hope, of the major recast that Neighbours has had of major characters that have changed faces. I may have missed a couple in the mix. I'm sure you'll let me know in the comments if I have. Um, but we'll see how Don Haney does in the role of Pierce. Um, really, with the acting talent that Don Haney has compared to Tim Robards, who didn't really have any when he joined the show. This should be the best version of Pierce we've seen for these four weeks that he's on the show. But we shall see. 
about what recast did you enjoy the most which recast did you hate the most sound off in the comments below don't forget to hit like and subscribe for more content for not just neighbors but coronation street emmerdale and when it comes back eastenders too thank you for watching stay safe stay healthy we'll see you next time